Coach tells him, you're gonna play a man to man. If he go takes a shit, you wipe his ass. You see? <laughs> and I like, okay. I said, that's my only job. I don't care if you make a tackle, just don't let him catch the ball. So I said, okay. Can I do it anyway? You know, he was like, I don't give a shit. How you call him? Just call him. Bumper run, I tell people, I say, they, they think it's a football term, they think it's a golf term, I, even, I say, no, it's a life term. It's a lifestyle. My name is Money Smart Guy Matt Sapala. I'm a United States Marine Corps veteran who became an entrepreneur in the insurance industry. Being in business for myself gives my family and I the best chance to win our financial championships every year for the rest of our lives. Back in 89, what was a fourth rounder getting paid? What's oh, this, my what's this, what's this, I mean, Today's what, four, five, fifty league number? Man, I, my signing bonus was $95,000. That's why I was so, see, back then, it mattered if you were first, second round. You weren't gonna get paid after those rounds. You, you know, third round, but once you get into the fourth, and yeah, four, back then it was 12 rounds. Yeah. When you get four through 12, man, I got $95,000. My, my first signing bonus. <laughs> my rookie salary, I made a, look, I was, <laughs> I made 115,000. So my rookie year, I made 205,000. <laughs> CEOs made more than me. And they was out there running around, oh, oh Ray Crockett, you're rich, you're rich. I was like, be, you know, because of me, I went to school yeah. for finance and, and for computer science. Yeah. I asked why back then, information systems. So I got to intern at IBM. So I knew my uncle was a, you know, he was a VP of IBM yeah. back then. That's the only reason why I went for computers, because yeah. I was like, he got it, look, he made me bank. So I was like, that's what I was going to do. I had no idea about football. But anyway, so my freshman year, I mean, my little rookie year, I make it to the league, you know, everybody automatically think. He rich, he yeah, made it. Yeah, yeah multi-millionaire. So I'm thinking, okay. Man, my agent called me and said, this is what I was getting. I was like, shit, I could have made more computer science. Corporate America. I should have went to eyes wide. Information systems. I'm like, what the hell? When you got into PHP, yeah. The first thing you want to do is evaluate. Yeah. Well, you gotta prove it, you know, and make it. But the first thing you do as a per, as a personal thing, yeah. you what? You evaluate what you can make. You say I'm in PHP. Well, let me see what my ceiling is. Let me yeah. see, you know, what, what my beginning is. So I have, you know, some numbers to reach. So yeah. when I got there, I can get that two hundred and five thousand dollars. I started looking at starting corners because I was a backup. Yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, who making the Dion and all those guys? I saw what they was making. I said, okay, I, yeah. I see. So you evaluate your market, your, your market, uh, your market value. And evaluate your market value, and then see what the ceiling is. Yeah. And then see what like, what do you have to do to get there. So for me, when I saw Dion and those guys were making a million dollars playing corner, I said, okay, why are they making a million dollars? Oh, they're starters. Okay, they're starters. Oh, no, no, they're not they're starters. They're upper echelon starters. Yeah. They're all pro. So I set out my second year you to be a starter. I, after the sixth game of the year, I was I was a starter. My third year, I get my second year. I started, wow. So I started 10 games my uh, sophomore year, my second year. My third year, I was all pro. I made all pro. I was like, okay, now I'm a starter. Yeah. They paid me starter salary. But how do I get to the next salary? Which is what you do in your team. Yeah. Okay, I made 200,000. No promotions, yeah. How do I get promoted? And what, you know, what does that look like? Yeah. What do I, okay, I gotta make, oh, I gotta get three. Okay, no, I gotta get four. You evaluate. You, and then you see what your ceiling is. I'm, I'm so thankful of entrepreneurship. Here's why. I'm looking right now at our cash flow and business. Ray, you're gonna, you're gonna pee uh -huh. when you see this, man. Hold up. Let's see here. So, but you're gonna freak when you see this. So your your your, fir your first year, you got paid a hundred, two hundred and five thousand. Two hundred five. So this is what I made so far this month. July. Wow. Crazy, huh? You made my salary in in a month. Uh, in a month. Twenty years later. Yes. Or thirty years later. Well, the bottom line is, as 
is when it's I crazy. talk to people it's about entrepreneurs yeah. and entrepreneurship, I tell people all the time, where I live, yeah. those people didn't play football. Those people didn't play basketball. Yeah. So what they do? Yeah. <laughs> They're entrepreneurs. Yeah. 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 So I'm like, it's more multi-millionaire entrepreneurs than multi-millionaire football players. Ooh. I guarantee you that. Ooh. I guarantee you that. Uh, that, that that's, a, that's a sound bite for Yeah, right there. And, and here's the difference. And here's, and here's the big kicker is that the life expectancy is longer. And the ability to make that money. Yes. I'm yeah. like, you can be a millionaire for 30 years yeah. in business. Right. Once you get there, you get there. If you make it around 30, you got 30 years to 60. You'll be a millionaire. 30 football. Life expectancy, three and a half years, four years. Not for long, NFL. When did, you, when did you start picking up Bump and Run? Bump and Run was college or the pro? High school. High school, yeah. High school is so crazy. It's, uh, it's a tech, it's a, it's a it's technical. It's a technical. Man, let me, the reason why I titled my book, Bump and Run, it made me and it saved me, was because when I went to high school, I was playing running back. Like, at, down on JV, I started JV my sophomore year. First four games, I had like two, probably a thousand yards already. I averaged like 250 as a running back. As a running back. We get up to right before district starts. Coach calls me in his office and he's like, hey, this district has four or five fast receivers. We can't cover them. You're the only one with enough speed to cover them. And that's how he's talking to me. He's like, so I want you to move up to varsity and start for me at corner. Can you do that? I'm like, move up to varsity? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Had no clue. Had no clue what I was gonna do, how I was gonna do it. Go home, tell my, I told my, my brother, Daryl, who passed away, he was the Marine that passed mm -hmm. away. I tell him, hey man, I gotta move up to varsity playing corner. It's like, I don't know what the hell, you know, I don't know how I'm gonna do it. You're running back. He yeah. pulled out some film of Lester Hayes. He said, just do this. Like, like, like VHS tapes. VHS tape. I pulled out some film of Lester Hayes. He said, just do this. And Lester Hayes was the master of bump and run. You know, he's, <laughs> that's Lester Hayes. He squats. Real, real. It was crazy, man. <laughs> yeah. But, so I went back to school. My brother, we got to do a picture of that. Oh, that's I crazy. Know, you lined up like this and you come. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I go back to school and coach tells me, you're going to play a man to man. If he go take some shit, you wipe his ass. That's what he said. <laughs> and I like, okay. I said, that's my only job. I don't care if you make a tackle, just don't let him catch the ball. So I said, okay. Can I do it anyway? You know, he was like, I don't give a shit. How do you come? Just come. So I, my brother showed me bump and run. I walked up, and this is way back in 83. Wow. 83, well, you know, bump and run wasn't big in yeah, high school. Yeah, yeah. So the receiver comes out. And I'm playing off. He runs up. And he lines up and I ran up. Got down like he offside. He didn't know what he, he was that afraid. He didn't know what to do. This is an all-state ride receiver. Nobody had ever played bump and run on him. Uh, everybody played off cover. Everybody played off cover, so he just killed me. I was just like this. All I kept thinking was Lester Hayes. Yeah. Lester Hayes. And I never does. As soon as he moved, I was dead. Because Lester would just jam me shit at me. He would mow me. Yeah. So as soon as he took a step, I just bam, hit, and he took off running. I ran him all the way over to the sideline, and that's that's all I thought about. I saw what Lester Hayes was doing. I'm pretty astute. I mean, so I said, okay, I see what he's doing. He's jamming him. Yeah. You right? And, and I said, and he's directing him. He's telling him where he want to go. So there's no other time you can do that. All, and that's why I tell people what I train, I tell the young corner that I mentor, I said, when you go up to bump and run, this is the only chance you get to dictate to him what he's gonna do. Any other time in the game, he's dictating to you. You react, you react. I said, so if you go up there, make a count. Don't go up there and don't touch him. I don't care if you get a flag, go up there and jam it and hit it, because this is the only time you get to do it. So I'm like, whether you get a flag or not, I'm okay with it. Right. But what I want you to do is to let him know, you're not going to dictate this game. Right. Yeah, You're going to get your chance, I'm going to get my chance. You know? 
So that's what I did, and I, long story short, bump and run is what made me a varsity player. Because I, at that time, I was 5'7", five, 5'7 seven, five, seven and a half. I couldn't, you know, I would've been out bad. I'm telling you, bump and run, it, it made me. Like, I, I was nobody. But everybody started saying, who is that guy who bump and runs those receivers in that district? Who's the guy? And everybody, oh, that's Ray Crockett. That's Ray Crockett. Next thing you know, colleges started coming out to me. It was like, you play what we play. They was like, if you can do that, you can get you a scholarship. I was like, okay. So that's, I mean, so basically it made me, dog. It did. Bump and run made me. Made me save you, man. <laughs> wow, I love it. Love it. Tra translate, translate that to business, man. It's like you, you come after certain goals, life comes to you, life's gonna line up, you line up. You direct it, you bump it, right? Whatever. Yeah, yeah. That's you, your you, translation of business. You, know, you hit, you, you, you jam, you, you jam it up. Life trying to jam you up, you jam it right back, man. Exactly. You dictate. That's it. You, you dictate know? to life. You don't let life dictate to you. Yeah. You dictate. And you know what? It's just like you. What made you? Everybody has a moment or something. Mm -hmm. Was the moment that you realized I can sell. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I can say it. Yeah, you want to come check it out? No, I got you. I got you. I'm going to bump around the state. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm ride you exactly. into, the, into the bench. That's what you do, but that's what you do on your team. Yeah. Bump around. I tell people, I say, they, they think it's a football term, they think it's a golf term. I, even bump. I say, no, it's a life term. It's a lifestyle. Yeah. Because what, what we do on a day to day basis, you have to bump around. Whether it's cancer, you better get up close and personal. Yeah. If you don't, you'll get beat. Yeah. If you play off, and let cancer dictate to you, let depression dictate to yeah. you, anxiety dictate, you're gonna get beat on a daily basis. And you're always reactive, man. Don't be reactive. Don't be reactive. No dictate. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So when you're tired, you're in the game. Tired, you're in the game. Uh huh? Well, what was, did you have like a technique of, of, uh, of recovery or what was Always look up. And it's, it's the same in business. Yo, this is the same in business. Yeah. Always look up. Always look up. Your wind comes from here. If you slump down, you can't breathe. Same in business. If you lose in business and you slump down, where are you looking? Down. Yeah. Where are you going? Down. Yeah. Look up. Look up. That's, that's look up. So when, so you're when you're the game. Yeah. Look up. look up and breathe. Let it come through. <laughs> Let it flow through you. You know what, I'm gonna do that next time I get screwed up on camera like I did yesterday. Look at the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, hey, I promise you, uh, it'll, melt you it'll melt you down you, and you'll feel bad. You're right. From your head to your toe. You're so so your physiology has a lot to do with, yes. with attitude and recovery. Yes. Yes. Attitude and performance. Yes indeed. Man, it's clutch. Exactly. <laughs> that's I mean, but that's what they say, you know, most of the athletes yeah. you, know, don't, you know, and don't I, the, the armed forces, I don't want them to take it the wrong way, but they say most of the athletes were Marines because yeah. it's more, a lot more challenging the stuff that you have to do yeah. to qualify. Like my brother played basketball, yeah. you know, played football. Yeah. So he just looked, he just, yeah. we thought he needed some discipline. Yeah. You know, that's why, that's the only reason why he didn't make it. I mean, he just wasn't disciplined. He but like, didn't, didn't listen to coaches, didn't listen to your mentors, didn't listen to, you know, yeah. if you want to make it, you, you got to make it as a team. Yeah. If you want to go far, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You got to be with the team. You got to be with the team. Yeah. You know? If you want to go fast, you go by yourself. Go by yourself and be lost. Right. right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It don't matter how fast you go. Right. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Yep. Yep. You know what I'm saying? You go by yourself. You sprint out there. <laughs> Sprinters going to tire out. Trust me, I'm a sprinter. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You ask me to run a mile, oh man, it might be a 19 minute mile. <laughs> I, 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 I guarantee you, because what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run hard for a hundred, walk the curve, <laughs> run the straightaway, walk the curve. For 26 for two miles. miles. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's why I never tried. That's the one thing I tell a lot of the players, especially the younger players, is yeah. something I didn't know. Is what I told you the other night is that. When you go over and you play football and you go to the Marines, mm -hmm. you can come out with all the medals you want. I can come out with Super Bowl trophies. But when you go in that next arena, yeah. 
You gotta shred it. You gotta humble yourself. You gotta take all that stuff out because it's not transferable. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'll tell you the work ethic. Yeah, well, the work ethic is transferable, but I'm, just, but I'm saying your accolades are not transferable. Right, right. Yeah, your ribbons, your, your trophies. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. When you went to business, you were down there. Excited about it. You had to learn, you had to take yeah. tests, you, had, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. A lot of us, to a fault, we've been pampered so long of, of people telling us where to go. What time to be there? When, when, what time to eat? Mm. You know, it's almost like assembly line that you, you don't get to be a self thinker like entrepreneurs. Yeah, yeah. So when we leave the league, yeah. we think that's transferable, but it's not. Then nobody's telling you what to do. Nobody, yeah. yeah. It's not transferable. All your accolades don't transfer. So if I walk over in the PHP, mm -hmm. get my test, and walk in there and say, I'm all pro, <laughs> you guys are gonna say, you all know. <laughs> you, how much you make? Right, right. How much have you brought? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's not transferable. Your accolades are not transferable. You have to go over there and be humble, shred all of your medals, shred all of your past stuff over in this arena, because yeah. every arena is different. You get to a new arena, you gotta learn. You gotta <laughs> look just like I did. I had a notebook when I went to the NFL. Yeah. Every receiver I covered. I kept it in the Because you're a student of business. I was a student of the game. Yeah. I was a student. Well, when you go to the next arena, you got to become a student. Oh, love it. <laughs> love it. Oh, that's it. I love it. You know what? That's what's so crazy about it. it it's similar. I always relate sports and business together because they're so similar. Yeah. When I got moved to safety, it sucked. I was mad. I was disappointed. Mm -hmm. Not knowing that it was actually preparing me for, next, for, for next longevity level. on the next level. Because not hardly any corners were playing that long. You know, Darren Green played whatever, the most corners, seven, eight, nine years, why? Because their legs, once your legs go, you gotta go. Yeah. Well, me, I played all over the field. I played linebacker, I played safety, I played slot, I played corner. You know, I played all over the field, what that enabled me to do. And it was only because I was tough enough. So if you I did, had I, I played safety, yeah. I wouldn't have been tough. That, that versatility. Yeah, I wouldn't have had yeah, that versatility is, is what, what made me last so long in the league. I could do more. Yeah. So if you look at my stat count, I got 15, 16 sacks. Yeah. I got interceptions. I got pass defense. I got fumble and fumble recoveries. You know, so it's like I was a sack, you know, yeah. kind of, look kind of like that point guard who, who could ditch, yeah. shoot, yeah. <laughs> you know, and score. Yeah. I could do it all. That's why I played a decade and a half. More you can do. So when you're in business, yeah. sometimes they'll move you to a department you don't want to be in. Yeah. Yeah. Not knowing because of this and because of that, now all of a sudden you're good enough to lead two departments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The more you can do. I love it. I love <laughs> it, man. I love it. This is like this is like entrepathy stuff right here. <laughs> so what? Uh, it's. Uh, 40. So I got to set up. Why don't we break some bread? Yeah, let's break some bread. Let's break some bread, and then um, we get my. Uh... The, the difference between sports like that, track and field, bodybuilding, and all that, if you're not a medal winner, you ain't getting paid. You might as well work at UPS, and a lot of, <laughs> a lot of them do. A lot of them work at UPS and bodybuild or run mm -hmm. track, you know. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not if you're not that top guy, my best friend in high school and college, was Michael Johnson, the gold shoes. Really? Yeah, yeah. We we went to uh, yeah we went to Skyline together in high school. We went to Baylor. Wow. And I, I went to Duncanville. Part of my time, but yeah, yeah. He and I. It's crazy. I went out there. <laughs> my freshman year, I ran track, and it was a rude awakening. You know. <laughs> I was like, look, I better get good at this football thing because I ain't going to make no money running check. You got to be, you you have to be the top, you know, either the top three, four, you know, rank, yeah. at least in the top five. Yeah. Well, you're not making no money, yeah. especially back then. Yeah. Well, back then, because if you're not the one or two, the Carl Lewis, Michael Johnson, mm -hmm. you know, guys like that. You same boat. You yeah. same boat. You know, they made money. They, yeah. You know, they made, but the... the there's a million smaller guys that you don't even know. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it was making eight or nine thousand to run track, doing the same training, and only <laughs> point, two, point two seconds slower. 
Mm-hmm. Which is what, three strides? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Three strides is the difference between broke and paid. So I said, hey, I'm gonna play football because a lot of the, it's like business. A lot of people can get paid. <laughs> You know, in track and field, one, two, or three. In business. Three steps. The margin of error. The margin of error. Yeah. yeah. What you talked about yesterday, pick the right industry. Pick the right industry. That's right. Yeah. That, that, and that's key. That's yeah. key. That's that's where I was. I was like, okay, I'm fast, but I'm not super fast. Yeah. So track is not my industry. You know, I'm I'm good in basketball, but I'm not tall. You know. Mm. <laughs> I'm like the chance. The chance you pick the right industry because what you're looking for is the the margin. You want to know what are my margins to be good <laughs> or, or or the best. You know what I'm saying? It's like you could do the ratio. If I go to this business, can I be a millionaire? What's my ratio? What well, you know? And then you go. Mm -hmm. Football, <laughs> football, <laughs> or then you look at your industry. You say a lot of there's a lot of insurance, but like you just told me, oh, right, right. guys making 150 a month. You're making two, three, four, whatever a month. Mm -hmm. But there's a bunch of guys who can make good money, which is like football. There's guys that make 10 million. Mm -hmm. There's guys that make, mm -hmm. but then you got a bunch of guys out here making good money. Yep. So that's the industry, you know what I'm saying? Yep. You got track and field, you got this guy getting paid, this guy getting paid, a bunch of guys not making nothing. <laughs> boxers, the only, the only the real, you know, boxers you know, mm -hmm. making money. The rest of them, training them, and you know, so they, and in my opinion, <laughs> if you're not gonna be the top, you're in the wrong industry. If you ain't got a chance, you yep. might as well put them gloves down and go do insurance or, <laughs> or, or something else and, right. and get paid. Because yeah. your margins are better, you yep. know? The ratio is better. You, you invest all that time and effort and money. Yeah. And then you never make it to the top and doesn't have a financial reward, no payment. No, no payment at all. I mean, if, if you work and you at least want to know that eventually there's a chance. Yeah. So that's why it's okay to go after whatever you dreamt of. But don't be afraid to change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? Don't don't be don't be afraid to make a, a split decision. <laughs> give it all, you know, give it all you got, but then evaluate. That's why you evaluate. And you look at the ratios, you evaluate every year. Evaluate every year. Did I did I move up? What's my ratio to get here now? Mm -hmm. and, if, and look, and if that ratio is not, shoot, do something else. Yep. Yep. Do something else. Good. And put the same energy and effort into it, though. What were some of the biggest dumb money moves you saw a player make? Oh man! <laughs> right, rank them. Uh, top, top three. Man, there, I mean, there's so many different. But see here, and that's why I said what I said earlier about transitioning into another arena. The one thing I can guarantee you when you play football is, is you're going to retire. And when you do, you're gonna do something else. Yeah. So I'm thinking, you know, hey, it's kind of like everybody love love, love Ray Crocker, you know, or he does it, he does it. You know. But when you go in the business, <clears throat> if you're thinking that way, you're gonna be, get burned. If you're thinking that that everybody's gonna be loyal to you, you know, like your team was, you get burned. And that's what that's where we make a lot, of, and that's where I made them. I mean, I entrusted a guy in a hedge fund, 2.5 million. Add water, a lot of us got in this hedge fund. It was a Ponzi scheme. You know why? Because we don't know hedge funds. They weren't regulated. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. But there was a bunch of, and the sad thing was a bunch of lawyers <laughs> and doctors and, you know. And you so, think, you think that. And you think they would know. You know, I'm thinking I'm really counting on them. That's why you don't count on anybody <laughs> to, to do your thing. You. You have to put the effort and the energy and the work out there. Yeah, you got to get up in it. You, you got to get up. You got to bump and run it. Because if you don't, I mean, I played off coverage thinking, oh, they, he he knows what he's doing. He went to Harvard. You know, there's doctors and lawyers and school teachers, all these people. I'm like, that are smarter than me. They're in this thing, so it must be good. Mm -hmm. And it's just like Madoff, you know. Uh, he made off. He made, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you talk, who would ever think somebody would, you know, 
would do yeah. something like that. You talking about seven billion dollar Ponzi scheme yeah. for a lo for th 20, 30 years? Crazy. Long time. Crazy. Yeah. But I watched and, his movie. Did, uh, I think his movie's on the HBO or something like that. Yeah, yeah. He he had to be really, really good because the guy who we Pacino, did a Pacino played him. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. The guy who we did the uh, the hedge fund with, he he was sloppy. That's why I mean myself and Rod, we were looking at numbers. You know, Rod has three uh, what a finance business. You know, he has three degrees. So Rod and I, we were looking at our statements and. One one month it'll be here, the next month it didn't move, and I and I'm like, wait a minute, why didn't it hold up? Now it has to do something. Yeah, right, right. Can't be. Just, he was just sloppy, you know. So he got caught. But Madoff must have been really, really good to do it as long as he mm -hmm. did. Oh, there was a hidden office, and all the guy was doing is just fal falsifying statements. That was his full time job. Really? Just a falsified statements. I gotta watch that. Yeah. I, gotta, I definitely gotta watch it because because they they raided the office. They couldn't, oh, they, everything was legit. Mm -hmm. And then until so they went to the other floor, that's where the that's where the real operations was. Right. So the office was just a front. Mm -hmm. The real scheme was happening, you know, different floor. Right. <clears throat> um, that, that's the worst thing though. Right. Mm -hmm. Have your office filled with uh, uh, windbreakers. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. That's it. <laughs> Let's <laughs> go.